one of the questions I've gotten asked a lot recently is why did I stop making videos? Um, and the answer to that is I really didn't stop. After my last video, my wife and I moved to a new home and it's taken me that long to get the shop set up the way that I want, get all the tools in place, all the wiring run, make sure that the equipment that needs to have good alignment still has proper alignment. And now that that's all done, I'm ready to work on my first project in the new shop. So let me move the camera, I'll bring you guys in close and I'll show you what I'm gonna be working on today. What you're looking at is the setup I currently use to shoot videos and that consists of an external microphone, a preamp, and the camera itself. Now I plan on making some modifications to my rig in the not too distant future, hopefully within the next month or two. And to make it easier to rig everything up and give me a little more flexibility with how I rig things up, I'm going to make what in the camera industry is commonly referred to as a cheese plate, which is usually just nothing more than a piece of aluminum stock that has a sequence of quarter inch 20 and 3 8 16 holes in it, threaded holes in it. Um, mine's going to be slightly different as you can see here. It's basically a flat rectangular plate, in this case out of 60-61 T6, that's basically just got a lip on each side to help it more positively lock it down onto my preamp. So to do that, I'm going to use this bar stock. Um, so this could be potentially interesting because since it's flat rolled bar stock and I'm going to take about 20% of the thickness off of it, it could move around, it could cup or it could bow. Hopefully not too bad, hopefully not at all actually. So I'm going to go over here to the bandsaw, rough cut this down to size, and then I'll head over to the mill. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring this part down to width. To do that, since it's ultimately going to be substantially taller than the vice jaws, I'm going to block it in with these one, two, three blocks, and hopefully that'll make it a little bit more rigid. I don't even really care a whole lot if it's perfectly flush to the bottom. I just want a nice clean face because it's got dings and whatnot. Maybe you can see. So I'm down to the last two passes here to bring it to length. One conventional, and then one a small climb cut to give it a good finish, hopefully. So we're down to the part that I think is the funnest thing about machining, and that's actually face milling stuff, usually because you can get a really nice finish. Um, got the, uh, I don't have a face mill big enough to get this all in one go, so I'm going with the fly cutter. Um, this is just some A9 cutting fluid for aluminum. I'm going to touch off here and get started because you probably won't be able to hear anything once I turn the head on. This is the final cut on the bottom, or I guess what would actually be the top. We'll see how this does. I've turned the feed down and the um, RPM down, trying to get a better finish, because I don't need to hog off a bunch of material now, so let's see how it does. The last step of the evening is to mill the slot that the preamp will actually fit into. And to do that, I've got a 5 8 of an inch, three fluid end mill. It's brand new, never been used. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, um, 
rough out the majority of the material, and then I'll come back and take um, a light cut, cut on both sides and all across the bottom at the same time. So let's get started. Got everything roughed out. I'm gonna come back now. All the remaining passes will be at the final depth and I'm just gonna go over to this side and bring, I'm not sure what you would technically call this feature, the boss down to the proper width on both sides and then that will be done for the evening. I'm gonna knock the feed down just a little bit so you can get a little bit better surface finish. This is the last pass down this side, so I'm going to put a good coat of uh, cutting fluid on. I'm getting a nice finish across the base here, nice and smooth, very uniform. Hopefully I'll get the, on this final cut, I'll also get the same finish on the inside of this boss, for lack of a better term. It's been about a week since I filmed the last clip, and the delay is because two things happened. One is, while machining this original plate, I wasn't watching the print closely enough and I put two holes in and tapped them that weren't supposed to be there, so this part became scrap. And then the other thing I noticed, once I made this new plate and started drilling and tapping it, I noticed that my the quarter 20 tap I was using at the time was starting to get dull, and that was the last one I had. So I went ahead and ordered a new one because I really didn't want to, you know, having redone a bunch of work, I really didn't want to break a tap off in a part and scrap it again. So that's all good now. As you can see, I've got quite a few holes in here. I think I've got 10, nine or 10 to go. So let me show you the process I have to drill and tap all of these holes. I don't have any stub length drill bits, so I've been spotting all the holes. And I've also been kind of running the drill, well, I shouldn't say the drill. I've been running the mill slower than I need to, mainly because I really don't want to have to change the speeds. You know, this is a gearhead, so changing speeds is a little more, you know, takes a little more time. And with this many holes and as many steps to make each hole, I don't want to spend the time of changing the, uh, the speed, so I've just been doing everything in third speed, which is 345 RPMs. I 
should mention that I have been using coolant, not coolant, um, cutting fluid, but for the sake of filming this so you guys can see it really well, I've been, I'm not going to do it for these couple holes. Um, now the next step is to chamfer the hole. And I'm chamfering before I tap because this is a spiral flute bottoming tap. So it, you know, if it was a um, spiral point tap, I would chamfer after. But since, you know, this is almost straight flush across the bottom, I want the chamfer to help guide the bit down into the hole. So the first step here is to chamfer this. And I want these to all be pretty close. So I, what, I've, what I've been doing is I've taken the chamfer tool and pressed it all the way up against the face of the chuck. And that kind of gives me a reference surface. And then I've watched the dial indicator here on the front of the mill head and I know exactly how far to go down. And then the last step, oh, let me clean that off, is to power tap. I think with this many holes, if I remember correctly, I counted them and there's 89 of them. Hand tapping these is just not an option. It would take forever. So, taps in. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of tap magic. And we'll turn it on. So, remember, if you haven't done this before, it's really simple. It's not that bad, actually. Just have your quill loose. You know, don't have it geared for power down feet or anything like that. That'd be a real problem. Um, and all you do is you lower the quill down, you push it into the hole, and then you let the screw action pull it down. And once you've gone down far enough, you just stop the, the mill and then reverse it back out. And that does happen a couple times. Every now and then this has happened. It's not a big deal, just take a tap wrench, finish backing it all the way out. Now, the reason this is happening is because I'm using a keyless chuck. If I was using a keyed chuck, that won't happen. But again, that's just more time messing with the key that I don't want to spend on this project. So that's the step for one hole. I'm going to go ahead and finish off most of these. I'll try and get some nice close-up shots for you. And then I'll bring you guys back when I've got this done and I'm ready to do the deburring and the cleanup and the finishing.
So this is the finished cheese plate. Um, as I showed to clean it up, I had to come back and deburr the bottom because you know there was a bunch of just burrs sticking out from the drills, the drill bits punching through. So to do that, the majority of the holes I could just hit with um, a countersink and a cordless drill. To get these holes here on both sides, I can't use a countersink because they're too close to the sides and the countersink would just kind of dig into the side, make a gnarly mess. So to clean that up, I use this, which is just a piece of scrap aluminum. It was machined on five sides and then the large flat side. This is just some 220 grit wet dry sandpaper that was spray adhesive down to it. So I just lapped it, lapped all the edges, all the sides, and then the top. And then to give it a final finish, I came back and hit it with this, which is 360 grit Merca Merlon, which is very similar to um, Scotch-Brite. It's more geared towards um, woodworking, but I use it just like Scotch-Brite, does a good job. So overall, I'm really happy with this. I have a little ding here, I have a little scratch here or there, but that's inevitable with the number of holes and operations that has to be done. So. Here at the end of the video, I'll throw up some pictures of what this looks like in place on my preamp with the camera on it. 